Lab's all set up, boss. Oh, actually, he's the boss. I just pay for everything and design everything and make everyone look cooler. How many people have the privilege of calling themselves a genius billionaire playboy philanthropist? No, I'm not talking about you, Elon Musk. Sit back down. It's the one and only Tony Stark. He's the ultimate god of sass and nobody can tell me otherwise. Yeah, I, I know he's dead and stuff, but if there's anything that keeps his legacy alive, it's that massive collection of high-tech inventions he left behind for people like Spider-Man and happy to enjoy. So today I'm honoring his contributions with my top 10 Iron Man movie inventions. All right then, let's uh, log in. <laughs> there I go again with the dad jokes. I, I understood that reference. I'm discovering, uh, correction, I'm rediscovering a new element. Okay, before you attack me in the comments about this one, yes, I know that this was a plot hole in Iron Man 2 because vibranium was already a thing during Captain America's time, but this is a list about inventions and not discoveries, and well, technically he did create the synthetic version of the element to use his reactor. I mean, it was either that or he was going to die because palladium short as hell wasn't going to do the job. Anyway, it was cool to see that whole montage where he creates the element, and if you think about it, this was the first time we saw Vibranium in an MCU flick. Damn, Iron Man 2 is almost 12 years old now. So yeah, if you keep your nerdy brains aside for this entry, then it was a pretty neat trick. Also, I think this is the finest Tony ever looked in the MCU. Huh. You wanna run some tests? Run them. Oh, no! Oh, wow, yeah! Are those? Yeah. Christmas, buddy. A business tycoon like Tony Stark not only enjoys playing with his toys, but also looks forward to showing them off whenever he can. We saw a lot of that on display in other MCU movies. Whether it's those mini drones from Spider-Man Homecoming, Edith's drones in Far From Home, or even the wrist gauntlet in Civil War that he used to fight Bucky, Tony sure knows how to create stuff that gets the job done and makes you look cool while you're at it too. I also want to give him a shout out for the Nano Gauntlet from the Avengers Endgame, even though I know Tony took a lot of help from Bruce Banner and Rocket Raccoon to make him. <gasps> I mean, that thing literally saved half the freaking universe. I'm sure Iron Man deserves some credit for its invention too, but overall, this guy's creations do the flexing for him, and it shows. Yeah, I can fly. For the next Tony Stark, I trust you. Say... Edith. Ah, you must be wondering why I didn't mention Edith in the previous entry. Well, she was so crucial to the plot of Far From Home that I figured she needed her own moment. First of all, her name is just another example of Tony's legendary sense of humor. Like, Edith stands for Even Dead, I'm the Hero. Tony loved his acronyms. Yeah, he did. That's some serious swag there, isn't it? On top of that, she's got an endless army of drones that can wreck shit up whenever she wants. Well, whenever Peter wants, but you get what I mean, don't you? The fact that Mysterio's entire plan in the first half of the movie was to take possession of the Edith glasses goes on to show her value. It's a shame we didn't get to see all of her possible features, but I take great comfort in knowing that Tony designed her as a failsafe for his pseudo son. That's some serious dad energy right there, right? Plus, those glasses are kind of stylish too. I wouldn't mind copying one of them for myself if I had the budget for a government toppling device. I actually really like them. Can I be completely honest with you? Please. They look really stupid. Oh. But maybe they have a contact lens version of them. When you're ready, why don't you try that on? And I'll introduce the world, the newest official member of the Avengers, Spider-Man. You might be wondering how such an awesome invention is only at number 7 on this list. Well, keep watching because Tony really outdid himself in the MCU as his character's genius progressed perfectly with the times. Back to the Iron Spider now. This is easily my favourite Spider-Man suit because it looks absolutely sick and the features are simply phenomenal. I was really hyped when it got revealed in Homecoming. Apart from the regular tech privileges that you'd imagine Iron Man's prodigy to enjoy, the best feature for me is the instant kill mode. Those spider legs add so much more class to the already loaded suit, and I was happy to see it in full flow during the epic final battle in Endgame. And hey, let's not forget the scene where Spidey's suit takes on Doc Ock's mechanical tentacles in No Way Home. Yeah, that's right, I'm doing spoilers now. Enough time's passed, and if you still haven't seen the movie, well, pff, tough cookies. And this suit is ridiculously intuitive, by the way, so if anything, it's kind of your fault that I'm here.
Yep, out of all the Iron Man suits we've seen, and we've seen plenty, I mean, just look at Iron Man 3, the nano suit from Infinity War takes the cake. It sorts out all of the flaws that Tony had to face with the previous suits, and there's something about the way it fits that gives Iron Man a very stylish and futuristic vibe. It had everything, a speed booster, instant suit recovery, laser cannons, and God knows what else. The nanotechnology in itself is something to behold, but the weaponry on this one was so effective that Tony actually ended up lasting longer against Thanos than Hulk did. I mean, not only did the Purple Titan have more Infinity Stones at the time, Iron Man even made him bleed for crying out loud. That suit was perfection and Marvel really cashed in on the look during the Infinity Saga. Just look at the merchandise sales and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Where'd that come from? It's nanotech, you like it? How could you be worthy? You're all killers. Okay, I know Bruce already had a hand in this, but come on. Ultron's first physical form was all Tony, and the rogue AI also used a lot of Jarvis's features to come to life. So yeah, I'm going to count this one on Tony's list. Ultron isn't exactly something you'd be proud of, though, but he's still a badass with such a frightening level of intelligence that you sometimes worry about the intentions of the bald-headed billionaires of our world. He can command anything once he hacks into it, and, well, he can hack into pretty much anything. Since his thinking is also somewhat characterized by Tony's mindset, I guess you could say that he's also part machine, part French bearded millionaire. He wasn't really all that in his own movie, but if you've seen the What If series on Disney+, Plus, you know exactly what this machine is capable of. To think that such a monstrosity was created from the mind of the man who saves the universe is some deep philosophical shit. The vibranium's getting away. And you're not going anywhere. Of course not. I'm already there. I'm calling it Veronica. Yes, this one just had to make the top five. What's better than an Iron Man suit? A giant Iron Man suit. Veronica's a work of genius that needs no introduction. The suit's got a massive load of weapons that have been specifically designed to take down the angry green giant. Watching that kick-ass battle between Hulk and the Hulkbuster was super cool and gave the fans exactly what they needed to come back to life when the movie started to slow down. To add on to its frightening abilities and weapons, the suit's actually hidden in a freaking satellite in space. I mean, come on, how badass is that? Tony really reached a new level when everyone saw this invention back in 2014's Age of Ultron, and while he's gone on to make a lot more stuff after Veronica, this suit will always remain etched in our memories. Also, I want to shout out to the Hulkbuster for helping the Hulk during his difficult time in Infinity War. No! I'll screw you, you big green asshole! Jarvis? You ever hear the tale of Jonah? I wouldn't consider him a role model. I think it's fair to say that Iron Man really wouldn't have had as much of an impact at first if Jarvis wasn't around. He kind of changes forms later on, but we still remember him even today as the voice of Tony's suit. This AI powers pretty much everything in Tony's life and is so powerful, yet so subtle. We had no idea what he was capable of until we saw Age of Ultron, but his introduction in 2008's Iron Man got us hooked onto the polite voice assistant. You've got to be an elite level system to be able to handle Iron Man's daily requirements. I'd give anything to have an AI like Jarvis in my life. He'd be able to solve all of my problems. Need a girlfriend? He'll just sort out the Tinder profile. Need some money? He'll hack a billionaire's account for me. Need to submit an assignment? That's going to be like a minute's work for him, right? Unfortunately, I'm no Tony Stark, so I'm going to have to be content with being single, broke, and lazy. Tell you what, throw a little hot rod red in there. Yes, that should help you keep a low profile. Man, Tony was really flexing his inventions in Age of Ultron. Now, you might think that this is a controversial pick, but come on, Tony invented the inventors. He made Ultron first, who then went ahead and got everything sorted out for vision body-wise. Then Tony just used his other creation, Jarvis, to power up his conscience. So vision is technically Tony's invention, and nothing's going to change my mind on that, okay? When it comes to his features, well, I don't think I need to justify why vision is so high up on this list. Even Mjolnir considers him worthy. I mean, I ain't going to argue with Odin's rules. And apart from being a super-powered AI hero, he can also hit it off with the ladies. Bro's got one to simp for him so hard, that she's freaking creating an entire fake reality just to be with him. Damn it, even a robot's got a better love life than me. I've never experienced loss because I've never had a loved one to lose. But what is grief? If not love, persevering. And make sure you 
Ah. Yeah. Nice. Are you okay? Yeah, I feel great. Nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, can compare to the importance of the all-important arc reactor that set up the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Iron Man back in 2008. I mean, we probably wouldn't have got anything else at all if Tony didn't succeed at making this back in the cave with just about the bare minimum. It's hard to imagine that something so simple has gone on to become such an iconic device in the MCU legacy. Yeah, Tony abandons it after Iron Man 3 because he loves Pepper and all of that jazz, but let's not forget that this served as proof that Tony Stark had a heart. Hell, they even showed it in Endgame, and that's how iconic the creation was. The arc reactor is what defined the Iron Man suit to us, and nobody's going to argue that this was exactly what Marvel needed to become the leading name in contemporary box office cinema. This gets me so emotional every time. I love you 3000, Tony. I love you 3000. And there you go, these are my top 10 Iron Man inventions from the movies. Now I know he made a lot of shit during his time, so feel free to let me know your personal favourites in the comments. Hit me up on my socials if you want to discuss movies in general, and check out my Patreon in the description below for exclusive content. And of course, like, share and subscribe to keep in touch with all my latest uploads so that you never miss another awesome top 10 list. See you next time.